trigger warning, math, calculus, and physics. If you dislike any of those, you can leave if you want. But if you do like them, then welcome to my channel, fellow psychopath. Alright, so I'm trying to set a game, especially with bows and swords and axes and, and any other weapons really. But this video is about bows. So yeah, some people would tell me to practice and get good, but it's kinda boring, so I'm gonna need a shortcut. You see, with the power of high school physics, I should be capable of formulating a formula for flawlessly firing arrows and becoming a formidable foe to former physicists found on a formally recognized fighting game network in Minecraft. In short, we're creating the equation to shoot people. In Minecraft, of course, I'll make one for real life later. Now, before we actually start, please note that I'm not going to explain everything, because otherwise this video would be way too long. The audience retention of this video is going to plummet way further than it already has. I'll need to find a way to sing in a joke every two sentences to not bore you guys. Anyway, you need some basic knowledge about projectile motion and some calculus. And lastly, I am no physicist, just a high school student. I probably made a few mistakes along the way, and if I did, please point them out in the comments. Thank you. With that out of the way, let's get started. Our final goal is to create a function or make a calculator which take the target's distance and elevation as the input and return the angle of elevation we would need to aim for in order to hit the target. To get there, we'll need two formulas, the displacement for the vertical axis and the horizontal axis, both as a function of time. And to get those two formulas, we'll need to know the velocity as a function of time for both axes. The vertical axis will be much more of a pain in the ass due to gravity. But regardless, in order to find both formulas, we will need to know the acceleration due to air resistance. Let's go. So you know I code stuff into Minecraft. I mean literally all but one of my video is me coding random plugins. So I coded a Minecraft plugin to shoot an arrow and lock its velocity every tick, which is a twentieth of a second. I also made it find the acceleration or deceleration by subtracting the current velocity to that of the previous tick. And then I made it right into a text file where I copied the data and pasted them into an Excel worksheet. And now we have the giant pile of number we need to analyze. Thanks to my supreme intellect, I have noticed the relation between the velocity and the acceleration. As you can see, the change in velocity over one tick is exactly one hundredth of the previous tick's velocity. And thus we have this equation. The V is in negative because the acceleration is going in the opposite direction of the velocity. I hope everyone is caught up because we've been going pretty slowly so far. Ready? Let's go. So, acceleration at a specific point in time is equal to the tiny change in velocity over the tiny change in time. We put this in the equation, so we have a new equation. This is a first degree differential equation, but thankfully this is one of the easiest ones. We divide both sides by v and multiply both sides by dt, so now we got this. In order to get rid of dv and dt, we integrate both sides of the equation. Please don't confuse the v there, which is the output of the function we're trying to find with the v there, which is the initial velocity of the arrow, and the two v's over there, which are the integration variables. And also don't confuse the t there, which is the input to the function, and t there, which is, again, the integration variable. We do the integration as usual, 1 over v becomes the natural log of v, and negative 1 over 100 becomes negative t over 100. And then we evaluate the integrals. Now let's simplify the equation. Bring this term over here, change the natural log into e to the power of this side. e to the power of that is e to the power of negative t input over 100 times e to the power of the natural log of the initial velocity, which negates each other. v out is the velocity as a function of time, and now we have this simple function. <sighs> no, we're not even halfway done. We want the displacement as a function of time, so we do this over again. v is ds over dt, plug that in, bring that to this side, and integrate. We do the u-substitution thinking, and finally evaluate the different integrals. So now we have the horizontal displacement as a function of time. Keep this function in mind. Next, we'll have to do the same for the vertical axis. This will be even more difficult, as gravity is also affecting the arrow on this axis. First, we'll need to find the gravity. I reused the plugin from earlier, just tweaked a little bit to make the arrow get affected by gravity. 
and then charge it straight down so the plug-in locks the y-axis. Because the total acceleration is the air resistance plus gravity, even if the gravity is going in the opposite direction of air resistance, it will still work as the gravity will be negative. We can find the gravity by subtracting the total acceleration by the air resistance, which we could find by using the formula we found earlier negative v over 100. Putting the equations into an Excel worksheet, we can see that the gravitational acceleration is 0.05 blocks per tick per tick in a downwards direction, or 20 meters per second per second, which is approximately double that of the real world. This must be how MatPat feels when he's explaining the FNAF floor. So, back to the equation, total acceleration equals to the air drag plus velocity. We know A is dv over dt, and d for air drag is negative v over 100. G is the constant negative 0.05, but I'll keep it as G for now, instead of plugging the numbers in. You see, this is yet another differential equation, and I didn't know how to solve this one. But thankfully, a brief Google search was sufficient for me to learn how to solve it. Turns out we just do it the same way as we did before, just altered slightly. Instead of bringing only V to the left side, we bring the entire thing there instead. We also bring dt to the right side and integrate both sides. Use u substitution on the left side, and note that the c is a constant that will find its value later. It's there because it's an indefinite integral. Now we'll move negative 100 over to the right. c2 is just c over negative 100, it's still a constant. We'll deal with it later. Now the natural log of the left side, let's change that to e to the power of the right side e to the power of negative t over 100 plus c2 can be changed to e to the power of negative t over 100 times e to the power of c2. e to the power of c2 can be written as another constant, let's call it c3 because both e and c2 are constants. So yay, we now have the function, but it still has an unknown constant c3 to it. So let's try to find its value. Because we know that when time is equal to zero, the velocity is going to be the initial velocity, right? We can use that knowledge to solve for c3 by plugging in t equals zero and vt equals the initial velocity. e to the power of zero is one, then we move the numbers around for a bit, and we end up with c3 being this. Plug that back in, and we finally have this. You think we're done? Not yet. We still need the displacement for the vertical axis, but it's just the exact same thing, changing v to ds over dt and integrate both sides. So I did it, and now we have this. Alright, we are now done with the boring part, I think. Ultimately, it depends on what you classify as boring. So now, if you remember how normal projectile motion works, you calculate the two axes independently with time being the value that holds both equations together. We are going to do the same thing, but with more difficult equations. What I would do is to find the inverse of the function and link them together and stuff, but unfortunately, this is where I hit my limit. I could not find the inverse of the vertical axis' displacement function. If there's a way to find it, please do tell me in the comments section. Thanks. But anyway, I will not let my limit stop me from achieving this video's goal. If I could not find the inverse of the function normally, then I shall brute force it. So I made a C++ program that iterates through every single degree down to one decimal point. Calculate and write down the position at each tenth of a tick for the arrow that has been charted at angle into a file, and use GNU plot to generate the arrow's trajectory. The resulting file is 20 megabytes. Then I made another program that reads from the file and lets you input the target's elevation and distance, and it will tell you every angle that you can shoot in order to hit the target. You need to input Ctrl-C to end the program by the way, because Ctrl-C signifies the end of file, and that's the only way I know how to end the program. I'll link you the program and the file in the description. You have to put the file and the program in the same folder so that the program can actually read the file because I suck at making an actual program instead of a plugin for a block game. Alright, let's put this thing to the test. Alright, I've set up multiple targets to test the program out. That one is around 30 blocks above my head and 40 blocks in front. That one is around 20 blocks above, 60 blocks in front, and that one over there is just 100 blocks away with no elevation. So we're gonna try and test it out. Plugging in the numbers, it tells us that in order to hit that target, we're gonna need to aim for 45 degrees. Nice. 
Now in order to hit that target, we're gonna need to aim for 31 degrees. Nice. Alright, and now to go for the final target, we're gonna have to aim for uh, 24 degrees. Twenty four point three degrees would do. Nice. Alright, so overall the accuracy is pretty good. I mean I, I hit all of them totally first try. Totally. Yeah, so uh let's 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 try testing this out on real people, shall we? Alright, so right now I'm on Hypixel and one of my friends is online, so I'm gonna slash duel him. We're gonna do a bow duels, obviously. And here we are. Now send me your coordinates. Oh. Uh. So it seems that I forgot to factor in the fact that the target might be unwilling to cooperate. Which kind of makes the entire system impractical. Ah well, that was a waste of time and brain power. But I mean, it was kind of fun, don't you think? Well, I'm out of jokes. The video's over. There's no punchline. Class dismissed. Enjoy the formula for firing projectiles at former fetuses. See ya.